Be Cooking in Cleveland. Hey, how are you guys? Do you know who I am? Maybe my tagline will help you. Be Cooking in Cleveland. What's going on? It's your boy, DJ Clean. I just wanted to come before you to talk to you, talk to the people that's been watching me. Thanks for watching me make beats. You know my focus is more on the arts than gossip. I don't like to come up and talk much because when I do, I tell truth. And when you tell truth, people don't like you. You know what I'm saying? And I much rather concentrate on the art since everybody's concentrating more on talking. There's more people out there talking about making beats than actually making beats. But it's all good. But today, there's a few topics I want to talk about. I'll just go through them as I think about them. The first one is hip hop turning 50. And we don't know if that's necessarily true or not because we don't really have the true time stamp of when hip hop started. But it's cool. I can accept that if that's what mainstream media wants to go with. That's one thing that I can accept. Hip hop turning 50. Now with hip hop turning 50, there always comes a negative connotation about hip hop. The latest negative connotation about hip hop is hip hop has no number ones this year as far as albums. Hip hop has been running the charts since probably the late 80s, early 90s. Of course, in the 90s, we had Diamond Albums, which is 10 million albums sold, physical copies. You had Tupac's All Eyes on Me. You had Biggie's Double Album, The Life After Death. Uh, oh, we had the Fugees. We had MC Hammer. We had, who else? We had 50 Cent, Gold Diamond. We had, oh, we had DMX, uh, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood, Gold Diamond. Of course, you had albums from Eminem that went diamond. Um, so hip hop has been the dominant force in the music industry for a long time. But let's understand something. It was by design. The music industry had come to a place where albums weren't selling like they used to sell. And every time something in America comes to a place where people lose interest, they say, I know. I know what to do to make it be interesting again. Let's let black people run it. And people will be interested again. That's what they do. In the 70s, you had movies. Then you had the black exploitation movies to get everybody interested in movies again. You had the Black Caesars, you had the Shafts, you had the Mac, you had Superfly, movies like, like that. To bring a whole new culture, a whole new spin, a whole new twist on movie watching to get moviegoers interested in movies again. Same thing in sports. Look at the NBA, how black people took over the NBA, basically. You know what I'm saying? Look at boxing in the 80s and 90s, how Mike Tyson unified the belts. He had all three belts. 
it seems that when we dominate something, they say, okay, that's it, it's over. They destroy it. <laughs> when we dominate something, they destroy it. What did they do with boxing? They said, oh, boxing is too violent. We got to get rid of that. So they come up with the UFC. <laughs> so they can be involved and they can dominate that. Same thing with the music. It's the same thing. As far as the music industry, that dominance was allowed by record execs, by record companies, because people had lost interest in music. This rap thing was a new thing to get the music industry revitalized. Now that the music industry is revitalized, wait a minute, we can't have all these black people dominate music. We got to get rid of this, some of this rap thing. How do we do that? Well, let's change it up. Let's, instead of it being hip hop and positive, let's, let's sign a bunch of these trap rappers. Let's make them a bunch of drill music. Let's make the music negative. Let's, um, let's create a system where they kill each other and go to jail. Let's insert mumble rap. When we know the numbers show, if you go look at the streaming numbers, even today, the highest played music on Spotify is 90s rap. We all know that. So if you know that, then why would you continue on a path down mumble rap, on a path down trap rap, when you know if you're a smart businessman, you're going to say, hmm, people are into 90s rap. Let's start making 90s rap music so music can sell again. Because people would, would listen to that style of music if it was made today. It's evident and it's known if you go look at the numbers. But nope, they want to destroy rap. Because they never really loved it. They only used it to revitalize the music industry. So it's okay that rap doesn't have a number one album this year. It's okay that rap isn't the number one art form. Once it became commercialized, in my mind, heart and soul... It was basically destroyed anyway. I, I really had the fever for it when it was on cassette tapes. I really had the fever for it when they were playing it on late night mix shows, when it was underground, when you had college radio playing it. And you had to know the time when you could turn to the college radio and hear your favorite fresh new rap song. That's when it was exciting. Nowadays, there's too many rappers to begin with. Rap is a get rich scheme. People come off the street and say, hey, I can rap. Or even if I can't rap, I have rhythm. I can keep a beat and I can have this guy write me a rap and I can say it. I know all the street elements. I'll involve the street elements in it. And I'll get rich and I'll be able to sell my brand and go on to sell other products using music. Basically, music is a stepping stone to get into the entertainment industry now. A lot of the rappers don't even want to be rappers. It's all about getting into another field or selling a product, selling another product other than music. That's not true artistry. That's not the way I feel about rap. If I would have if I would have got into rap commercially successfully, I'd have, I would have remained in it. I would have kept my integrity 
And by now, people would have probably said, DJ Clean fell off. But I didn't fall off. Kara's One didn't fall off. <laughs> um, Jadakiss didn't fall off. Fabulous didn't fall off. Cassidy didn't fall off. He just left the commercial music industry. And that's okay. Because the commercial music industry has always been against us. The true rap, the true artistry, the true art is underground. They're doing us a favor. By leaving us alone. I want them to leave us alone. Because once rap became commercial. That's when it started to go down. That's when. All the deaths of your favorite rapper start occurring. When they start taking out life insurance policies on their artists. Allegedly. When dead rappers become faster, become popping faster than the rappers that are alive because they're rapping a certain thing. They're saying a certain thing and it ended in death. So now I can totally capitalize off of their catalog that they're not here to get their percentage and their family doesn't know anything about the music business so they can't get the percentage that's owed them. So that's it about the, the, the music industry and about it not being a number one rap album this year. So what? And if there was a number one rap album this year, I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, the number one rap album on the charts right now should be Killer Mike's Michael. That's a dope album. That is a hip-hop album. It's a hip-hop classic. You can feel the energy in songs like Motherless, in songs like Exit Nine, in songs like Scientists and Engineers. You can feel, you can feel and hear the urgency and intensity and the black consciousness all of it coming together, culminating in that album. That's a dope album. Thank you, Killer Mike. Thank you. That should be the number one album, if any, right now. But no, it, even if there was a number one album, it'd be Little Dirk or Gunna or Young Thug. It'd be something like that. But like I said, they had they had to get rid of, of rap because how would Taylor Swift survive? <laughs> how would BTS survive if rap was the number one genre on the charts? How would Justin Bieber survive if rap was the number one genre on the charts? They can't compete. They couldn't compete against a Tupac or a Biggie or a Michael Jackson or a Whitney Houston. They couldn't compete against that. You know we the cream of the crop. So they got they got to get rid of us. They got to set us to the side. But it's all good. But I just wanted to say, if you haven't heard that Michael album by Killer Mike, go listen to it. It's hot. It's hot. What else did I want to talk about? There was something else I wanted to talk about. I'm glad all that converter talk kind of died down. And Av, he been putting out a lot of videos showing that that converter talk was BS. He been comparing the, comparing the NPCs, this one to that one. And I even saw a video where Someone had a, a, a computerized version of the SP-1200, and they was comparing that to the original SP-1200, and you couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> it sounded the same. It sounded the same on computer. So it's like, 
that whole thing was a waste of time, man. But I guess it served its purpose. I guess the people that wanted to come in and get some shine got some shine. But it's all good. But for all of you that's been watching, I've been making, I've been at least trying to make one beat a day. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Oh, my crew, second to none DJs. They showed out on this uh, mix show. There's a mix show online called Rock the Crowd. Man, DJ Nonstop, DJ Doc, I salute you. Second to none DJs showed up and showed out. I was like, man, they was rocking it, boy. So when you get some time, watch that. I believe their episode was episode 18, I believe. It's either episode 18 or episode 19. But rock the crowd. Dope show. Dope show if you're a DJ. If you want to watch something, you know, where DJ showcase their skills. Excuse me. That's a dope show. But I don't think I have anything more to say. I thank you guys for watching. Uh, there'll be more episodes to come. My goal this year is to have an episode for every day. I'm behind on the days, but my goal is to catch up. So at the end of the year, I want to have 365 episodes. That's my, that's my personal goal. I'm not worried about what the platform does, you know. I'm not worried about the numbers. Because if you do your research, you'll find that most of these numbers, 85% of these numbers are fake anyway. So once you find that out, you'll be like, oh, okay. So they use bots to attract people to their video. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not fair. Why, why not just put everybody out there on an even playing field and let people choose and decide what they want to watch? No, it's never fair. <laughs> it's This is America. It's never fair. <laughs> it's all good, though, because it's about legacy, man. I, I'm... I'm the tortoise in this race. I, I get there. I'm not worried about it. I get there. The fan base will grow. It'll grow at its own pace, though, and it'll be organic. So it is what it is. Thank you for watching. This is DJ Clean. This is Beat Cooking in Cleveland. It's a special black edition. Let me do my uh, tag again. Beat Cooking in Cleveland. Thank you. Salute. I'm out.